Hello students, welcome to the course Network Theory. In the previous video, we discussed the superposition theorem. So we introduced the network theorems, various network theorems, and also we have seen the statement and proof of the superposition theorem. Okay. So if you recall, what is meant by superposition theorem? So just we can see the problems in this video. So two to three problems we will see, uh, so that you can understand the superposition theorem in a better manner. Okay. So directly we go to the first problem. So note down the first problem. Using superposition theorem, find value of i in the circuit shown in figure. Using superposition theorem, find value of i in the circuit shown in figure. Okay. So just draw the network. You have three ohm, two ohm, seven amps, twenty four volt, and three amp. Okay. So what you have to do? You have to find the current i in this branch. Okay. So that is mentioned here, i. Okay. But how you have to do? See, when you see the network, there are different methods are there. There is no particular method that you have to use like this only. No, but as in here, it is mentioned using superposition theorem. Okay, in if they doesn't mention, you can go for source transformation also, mesh analysis, node analysis. Okay, the same network you will be seeing repeatedly with little variations. Okay, so only the point here is, so what is asked? So every problem here in VTU exams. So it will be asked, right? So using superposition. Otherwise, you don't know what to apply. So you have many methods. In all the methods, network will give the correct results. Okay. So always remember this. So here, superposition theorem I have to apply. That means what I have to see here is how many sources are there. Okay. So I have two sources here. One is seven amps current source and twenty-four volt voltage source. And this is a dependent voltage source. This should be untouched. Okay. So this should not be treated as independent. It is a dependent. It should be as it is in the circuit. So now, what is superposition? Cause and effect principle, right? So there is a cause here. Two excitations are there: 24 volt and 7 amp. And the response here is with respect to I value. Okay. So if you consider here mesh analysis, you will get the value of I. But we need to find now using superposition theorem. That is, you have to remember. Okay. For that, what is the principle of superposition? So we need to keep one of the source active. So this I need to active. This I need to deactivate. Okay. So how to deactivate a current source? Just open circuit the terminals. That means this branch is removed. Similarly, so then response will be called as I1. So you call that as I1 current. Second case, you activate the 7 amp current source and deactivate the voltage source. How to deactivate voltage source? Just reduce the 24 volt to zero volt. Zero volt means what? It is a short circuit. Okay. So like that. So you have to do, and then you call that current as I2. Okay. And using the principle of superposition, you find the total current I is equal to I1 plus I2. Okay. So what is I1 current here? When 24 volt source is active, 7 amp is active. That is I2. Both superpose. That is the total current I. So this we have proved in superposition theorem. Okay, even if you take the total current I equation, and then we have taken the separate I1 and I2 equation, so it will give the same results we have proved. So now this we have to prove with numerical example. Okay, so now we will follow first step. That is, we will deactivate the 7 amp current source. So see the solution. Independent voltage source 24 volt is activated, and the current source 7 amp is deactivated as a step one. Okay, and the current I1 is calculated here. Okay, so the new branch so circuit will be like this. So 7 amp is open circuit, and nothing is there here. 24 volt, 3 ohm, 2 ohm, 3 I1. So this is the I1. So it was I was there, right? So that I made I1 now. Okay, because corresponding to this controlling variable, this is the Voltage source. Okay, applying KVL we get. Okay, so there are many people had doubts in mesh analysis, right? So how to apply the KVL here? So there are two conventions are there in network theory. So different authors will use different. If you refer different books, you will get confused because some books will follow some notation. So normally we will give a circular. Okay, so this is the method I used to do in all the my calculations. So anti-clockwise also you can use no issues. And when you are taking clockwise, okay. So if we have minus to plus, uh, I take it as plus, okay. And another convention is you can use plus minus 
as minus okay so this is normally i will use right so so this is what uh, you have to uh, careful about okay so if you are following the same thing you have to pull so see here so i am started from this point now kvl means where you have started so coming back to that same point okay so that so i have started from here means so this is minus 2 plus okay so it is plus 24 i have written so i have to use this notation now okay minus 2 plus means plus 24 so how the polarity of resistors are taken normally resistor is an absorbing element so always current enters into the node so that's why current direction is like this so that's why it is plus minus so there is also plus minus here okay so since it is plus minus i am using the notation this one okay so minus so another so this is one convention okay so i am taking another convention is if you have plus minus they will have plus okay and if you have minus to plus it will be considered as plus sorry minus to plus is minus okay so this is another convention okay opposite of this so any one method you can use okay so don't confuse okay so don't mix up this okay here one here one don't do that if you are following this only you do minus to plus plus i call it as voltage rise and plus to minus as voltage drop as minus some cases because of the convention plus is there in the beginning so they will use the plus itself and minus is there in the beginning so that's why they will use minus okay so that is simple anyhow you can go through okay so i will show you both the equation for this so 24 then i have 3 so what is the voltage drop here 3 into current i1 so it is minus here because i am taking this notation right plus minus minus 3 i1 then plus minus so minus 2 i1 and here plus minus is there that's why minus 3 i1 is equal to 0 so the same equation can be written now using this convention okay so what is there in the beginning that notation will use minus 2 plus is there beginning so use minus 24 okay what is the change will happen we'll see so here you have the plus notation plus is there so that's why i will use plus 3 i1 then i have plus is there in the beginning so i will use plus 2 i1 here also i have plus in the beginning that's why i will use plus 3 i1 is equal to 0 do you see any difference here with this equation and this both will give the same results okay so that's why no need to confuse here any of the convention you can use here okay so when you solve this equation so what you will get so 3 plus 2 5 5 plus 3 8 i1 if you take this 24 right side you will get 8 i1 equal to 24 here also if you calculate this current minus 8 i1 okay 24 is this side so minus 8 i1 right hand side if you take 8 i1 if you rearrange the equation you will get the same 8 i1 equal to 24 i1 is equal to 3 amps okay so you follow the convention properly in this mesh analysis okay so i have applied the kvl here nothing but it is mesh analysis so alternate we will be using mesh analysis means kvl okay so you got the current i1 now simple equation okay similarly we do the step 2 to find the i2 current by activating the 7 amp current source hope it is clear so independent current source 7 amp is activated and the voltage source 24 volt is set to zero current i2 is calculated okay so first step is we are applying superposition next step you can use any of the things it may be voltage divider rule current divider rule it can be series parallel combination mesh analysis node analysis anything okay so now in this thing so it is better to since it is a current is there in between instead of going for two equations we can go for node analysis okay so that's why node is selected here so this is assumed okay so this is a node 1 or a anything you can assume and you have corresponding voltage here is v1 okay so again here in node analysis what you do node analysis means kcl okay so apply the kcl at node 1 we get so what is kcl it is the current again here there are two conventions are there so current entering the node will be taken as positive in some cases and current leaving the node will be taken as minus okay so this is one convention is there in node analysis similarly another case current entering the node is taken as minus and current leaving the node is taken as plus 
same as mesh analysis node analysis also you have two conventions which one you follow it is your option okay so any option you take you will get the same answer as i shown you in the mesh analysis okay so that's why no need to uh, bother about this okay so now so what you will get now applying kcl at node 1 so we get so i have written straight away this equation so the first equation if you write we have to write everything in terms of current now so what is so there are three branches are there this is one branch this is one branch and this is one branch okay so three branch i have to write the current so if i consider this as branch 1 okay so this as branch 2 and this as branch 3 any how okay any format you can go through so branch 1 what you have here this is the v1 right so this side plus you have this side minus this is the ground okay so there is no other element as there so all at the ground potential so this is v1 minus this node this node voltage is zero so v1 minus zero by the resistor okay so this is the first equation v1 minus zero by 3 Little bit, just a minute. Okay, so this is V one minus zero by three plus. So next, what you have? This current. So current, what is happening? Entering the node. So which condition you take? So current entering the node. If I take minus here, so what will happen? Okay. So any one convention you. So I will use that convention. So current entering the node, I will consider it as minus. So minus seven, okay. So then plus third branch I have V one. So this is plus minus is there, okay. So this is also plus minus. So V one minus three I two, the voltage, okay. So voltage is V one minus three I two. Divided by the resistor, that is two ohm, which is equal to zero. Okay, so any convention you can follow. So now this is simplified here written V one by three, then zero by three is nothing, so it is left out. Then V one by two is written first, and this seven is taken right hand side, it became plus, and this minus three i two by two also taken right side. Okay, so seven plus three i by two, you came like. So now, what is meant by I2 current here? So I2 current is nothing but if you consider the follow the convention, this is the tail and this is the head. So if you follow this convention, this side minus this side plus. So and where is it beginning? From zero to V1, it is flowing. Okay. So that's why it is written as zero minus V1 by resistor three. Zero minus V1 by three. Okay. So here we have taken V1 by three. Okay. So now it is taken. So it can be written as minus I two, okay, because it is current entering the node here. So you can write it as minus two also here in this node equation, okay. So minus I two, but I have considered it as always the assumption as I am taking in loop analysis. Always I will take circular convention, okay, anti uh, clockwise convention. Same way in the node analysis, we have the normal convention is current is leaving the node, okay. So all the currents are leaving the node. That is the assumption. Okay, so that's why current entering we will take it as minus. Okay, this is the convention I am following. Some people will consider current entering the node and current leaving they will take it as minus. That's why you have two conventions here. Because of that, most of the students in network theory they will confuse. Otherwise, network theory is very very easy. Okay, so now at least you have clarified these two conventions and stick to one convention, any one convention throughout the network theory. Okay. So if it is different, is there you are able to understand? If you are referring different books, should able to understand which convention they are following. Okay, so clear now. So answer will not come wrong. It will be same. So here, minus V one by three, it is coming I two. Here I have taken plus V one by three as plus I two because I have assumed here when writing KCL, it is leaving the node. So now I have to relate V one to I two. That's why I am using the correct convention because direction is shown like this. So it is zero minus v1 by three. That is me minus v1 by three. So from this v1 is equal to minus three i2. So I want to find out i2 here. So wherever v1 is there, I will substitute minus three i2. 
hope it is clear so now we will do that calculation so since it is a first problem i am explaining so next problems and all we will do it easily okay so just we have taken the denominator uh, combined here so v1 was common no so that's why 1 by 3 plus 1 by 2 is combined and minus 3 i2 taken outside equal to 7 plus 3 i2 by 2 so now we'll simplify so this lcm if you take 3 into 2 6 so here 2 plus 3 5 will come so 5 by 6 into minus 3 i2 so it is minus 5 by 2 into i2 will come and this 3 i2 i will take it left hand side so this will become minus 3 i2 by 2 Equal to seven, so two is common here. So you will get minus five minus three. It is minus eight i two by two equal to seven. So from this two fours are so minus four i two equal to seven. So i two is equal to minus seven by four amps. So this is the value. So current can become positive or negative. So negative meaning the direction whatever they have assumed it is reverse. Okay. so no need to bother about so now using the superposition theorem you have to add both currents i1 and i2 what you got i1 current and what you got i2 current both you add it that is the step 3 in the superposition theorem so thus the total current i is equal to i1 plus i2 3 minus 7 by 4 okay 3 was the i1 current so now this is 7 by 4 take the lcm here so 4 3 is a 12 12 minus 7 by 4 it is 5 by 4 amps So if you write it in uh, decimal, if you use the calculator, so it is one point four one sa. Then one is there. How much it will come? Two. Then one point two five amps. So this is one point two. So you can keep the answer in five by four, or you can write one point two five amps. Hope it is clear. So this problem uh, I take, and because in the previous module we started with module analysis, uh, node analysis, mesh analysis. That is the basic I told you. There were many doubts were there. Okay. So try. So I have not mentioned that two conventions to show that I have taken this example and explained both the node analysis and mesh analysis here. With there are two conventions following. Okay. So hope it is clear. So if you have still doubts as we do more problems. so it will be uh, clarified to you okay so i plan to do more problems but one problem it took uh, much time so enough for today so try to understand this so based on this knowledge so in the next video we will discuss the another problem another two problems on superposition theorem okay thank you we'll see in the next video